All right, everybody, we have Scott Dickinson here. So Scott, um, tell us a little bit about how are, are you are and how you've been dealing with this whole uh, crazy situation. I'm good. I'm, I'm not your, I'm not a, you know, I'm, I'm not a freelancer. I, I work at Full Sail and we've been online totally since March. Um, so gigs are gone, of course. Um, I got to do a gig uh, with Central Florida uh, jazz society a couple weeks ago so that was my first first gig i think we got another one uh at the blue bamboo in a couple weeks um but so those are my first first gigs. but no we've been surviving we've got a uh, three little kids you've met at least a, i think a couple of them um and the newest ones almost nine months so it's been been you know we've been cooped up with them and then you know the bigger ones doing virtual school uh, wife and I are working at home, so we're we're really lucky because uh, we're not really hit like so many people are. But um, right, it's been, it's been an adventure, all the same. Very cool. So let us uh, let's talk about the uh, the trio a little bit um, that came to the house. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what's that about? Like, what's the pro how did you think of that project? Like a drummerless trio. Mm -hmm. How how what's that all about? You know, um, I doubt it. I doubt it would have happened probably if I hadn't heard the finger painting album. You're probably familiar with the finger painting, uh, Christian McBride, Nick Payton, uh, Mark Whitfield. And I was really digging that album probably around that time. Um, and so, you know, I kind of, I kind of caught the, the, certainly the instrumentation. Um, I think we do a little bit different, um, interpretation of tunes than they, they took, you know, but that sound was really big for me. And I'm a huge fan of Nicholas Payton's tone, probably my favorite trumpet tone in jazz, probably, at least now. Um, and I just love the, you know, the uh, sonority of it. Yeah, you went through like a, a weird kind of period, didn't you? you like, you had like this block, block busting uh, first uh, album. And after that, like you he sounded weird for a while and then he came back like to like a different sound. Uh, yeah. Um, where, where did he sound weird? I wonder, I, I'm I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, maybe it's, maybe I saw live shows and, and, but okay. they just like, he sounded like it, it, it felt like he was trying to sound like somebody else. Like it was just weird. And then, and then uh, you know, he did, maybe, maybe you're thinking of like when he was doing Sonic trance or something, when he was doing like the, uh, kind of the free electronic stuff, maybe. Cause that was sort of in the middle. That was after sort of his straight ahead stuff. Right. And I saw him do the Sonic Trans thing, but I was, you know, I don't know. I've, I've dug about everything he's done. Yeah, he's, um, he's, a, he's a great player for sure. Mm -hmm. And so, but then you sing too. So you, you play trumpet and you sing. And uh, so that's cool. And I think I, yeah. it kind of brings a, you know, Vocals kind of bring a, a whole new audience and a whole, like it brings the audience in, in a different way. So, yeah. uh, and, and had you been doing that a lot before? No. So you basically, Never. so you basically started that with that group, right? Right. That's pretty right. Cool. And that's sort of what I, I mean, I do sing sometimes in other avenues, but I, I, I do try to think in terms of my projects, I kind of think of vocals as being something I do with this, with that band. I don't know that I'll do it with other, you know, groups that I actually arrange tunes for or not. Um, but yeah, I've been a trumpet player for, you know, decades and I only started singing five years ago, I guess. Um, but I would like to do it because I, I mean, I, I, I had thought about, you know, audience what might be into that, but uh, per, per, per chance if, if the vocals were up to the level they needed to be. But I just love vocal jazz uh, and I wanted to be, I wanted to do it. You know, I wanted to be a part of something I love so much and I love the songs. I love the standards. I love the and, song. And who, too. who are your favorite singers? Well, um, certainly Chet. Yeah. I, I can't get his sound out of my head, you know, um, as far as I probably like more of the ladies, honestly, in jazz more than I listen to, to guys. And um, I love Sarah Baum, probably my first huge 
um, love of, uh, uh, you know, a jazz vocalist, Sarah Vaughn. I love June Christie. I love Blossom Deary. I love Ella, of course. And um, I love Julie London. Um, I love, but also Nat King Cole, Johnny Hartman, um, and uh, probably Chet is probably prominent in my, in my head as a trumpet player and someone who can kind of make it sound similar to him. Yeah, I was going to say that. And then, you know, I think that I've always observed in my case, in my personal taste, that a lot of my favorite singers uh, are also instrumentalists. Uh, mm. Nicole, you mentioned, but I mean, uh, Chet Baker, you know, and, and to me, there's something, uh, it's funny because as instrumentalists, we're told and we're kind of maybe secretly trying to emulate the, vo the voice but my favorite, like Kurt Elling, maybe, I don't think he plays an instrument. I'm not sure. You know, it was funny because I'm just thinking right now, I'm thinking some of the vocalists who have the best command are actually not instrumentalists at all, which you kind of think it might be the other way around, you know? But like Kurt Elling or like Sarah, I don't think Sarah Baum, really, you know, played an instrument or Ella, but, um, you know, some of the people with the best vocal instrument Maybe that's because they're not distracted like us instrumentalists, but um, <laughs> um, distracted by the, the chops. Yeah, well, exactly the other way around. It works both ways, you know? Like it's, it's kind of, uh, I, it's interesting when you get a, uh, like you have an interesting sound with your voice, and, but then you have this whole, um, you know, the chops with the, the, your, your instrument which right. you don't possess with the voice, which makes you a better singer. Like, like a lot of the, you know, like er Kurt Elling is a good example in my mind of somebody who has a lot of vocal chops who tries to camouflage these chops. Like he uses them as apparently as possible. Like, you know, to make, mm -hmm. to make a song feel like a song. And that's, you know, that yeah. I think it's an, an advantage that uh, maybe instrumentalists have who have a sound like I do not fall in that category I do not have a, a voice like I just don't have a good yeah. voice like I just don't, I don't have an interesting sound you know but well, um, I'm sure you can I'm sure you're wrong <laughs> so anyways um, the good the good thing is that uh, basically Sunday at uh, at 7 30 p.m. we have a chance to see your trio and um, and people can go on the website um, and then there's an Eventbrite to see that. That's our favorite way. I mean, we make it available to other people, but it's our favorite mm -hmm. way to do it because then we know who's watching. And we, you know, like it's, it helps us a lot in many ways. And so if you can, if, you, uh, if you're out there listening to this and you want to you know, watch that, that concert, just go on the Timuqua website, timuqua.com and uh, in the events, and then just go on there and then we'll know that you're listening and it helps us um, in all kinds of ways. And uh, so you're playing with not only like just a trio, right? It's, it's a pretty cool trio. So who is playing with you? Well, um, it's been the, the same guy since we started. Um, and anyone in Orlando knows them. Uh, ben Kramer, son of Michael Kramer. I know both, they're, they're both regulars around here and, and uh, a lot of venues. Um, and Ben is fantastic, I think. I don't think he's another bass player I like, but feels better to play with um, around here. And um, and then uh, Bobby Coble, you know, uh, one of the, you know, the staples of, uh, I mean, certainly as a jazz player, he's known throughout Florida, but outside of jazz, he's known internationally. And, you know, and I've had people buy my, we just, re well, it's kind of tight, you know, is it okay if I, Oh, yes, please. Right. So this has been released not long ago. Um, and I was going to say, the only people I've had purchase this who I don't know personally have been fans of Bobby. You know, uh, I've had a couple of people who, who just follow him and just snag everything he does. So uh, he's been a benefit to me in many ways. But, um, you know, Bobby's, uh, I got to have Bobby because uh, I write some kind of tricky guitar parts sometimes. And I have to make and him. Bobby is, is like Bobby's a guy who will like, you know, get in my closet there and shed until the last minute. Like he sheds constantly. Isn't it crazy? He's not above anything like that. You know, like he, he works, he puts in the work on whatever he does. Um, and so I, 
take advantage of him in that in that sense because uh, I like to have a lot of specific voicings and I kind of like to write for the trio like how would a big band arranger write for three instruments you know right and so sometimes that's the approach we take and so there's shout sections and backgrounds written out and very specific kind of trumpet and then guitar and bass kind of like a piano arrangement that's been kind of orchestrated for the three instruments, you know, so um, I make him do a lot of reading. But yes, if you do, if you want to, this is going to be streaming, I think sometime this month, but you so can buy a physical one. Uh, we did a lot of these. Out of your website or CD Baby or? It's on my website, uh, scottdickinsonmusic.com. Okay. Um, and, uh, and it should be up on streaming platforms, um, I think this month. Um, but we're actually going to donate um, any profits that we get to the COVID-19 uh, the, the music cares, you know, through, through the Grammy Association. So um, for the physical, you know, I'm not going to control what happens to the uh, streaming, but, you know. Yeah, exactly. But well, yeah, we did several of these tunes, I think, on the show you're going to hear. You're doing the one from the last, the last one. January? Or something? Yeah, the last one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so cool, very cool. So everybody, just like make sure you watch that concert. It's a very good, uh, not only is it a good concert, but it's just like a different sound that you don't hear all the time and new songs and things that you don't hear all the time and new ways of playing standards also. So catch it up on uh, Sunday. Uh, it's also going to be on Facebook on the Timuqua page. And um, But you know, please, if you can, just go to timuqua.com and like register for the event. And uh, also, it will probably be on uh, WPRK, 91, uh, 91.5. Is, I, I don't know. I have the frequency. I, it just went out of my mind. But it's on, the, it's on your FM dial in the Orlando area. But for people who are watching, uh, they're also online. So you can find them online also. But, uh, but you can watch. Then you'll just listen to it. You know, If you don't want to watch it, you can just listen to it. But, uh, or just like put it on. And then you can just listen to it if you want to. It's great music. So everybody. But WP, do I, 89.9 or am I have my, my, no. my stations mixed up? It's not on. No, uh, uh, on WPRK the, is Rollins. So oh, oh the, yeah, 95.1, is that what you said? And 91.5. Or 91.5, I think you're right. 91.5, yeah. I believe, but I could be wrong. You're but right, anyways, right. you'll find it. It's a uh, WPRK FM. And um, they've been uh, basically playing our, our Sunday night rebroadcasts uh, along in real time. And so it's pretty cool. So, um, but hopefully you'll get to watch the, the concert and, uh, and uh, I can't wait to hear you guys again soon. Excellent. Thanks, cool, Benoit. Man. I really appreciate this. And it's excellent what you're doing uh, for the musician community. So yeah, we're trying, we're trying. And any, any money we make, if, you, if people make donations, it'll, it'll go to the musicians. So, you know, be generous. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Benoit.